Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Now, I am a huge fan of Frogware Sherlock Holmes titles, guys. I've done a playthrough of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, as well as Sherlock Holmes The Devil's Daughter here on the channel. And I really enjoyed both of them, not just for the voice acting and the gameplay, but I liked how both games had very different interpretations of Holmes. Uh, Crimes and Punishments had an older, more traditional Holmes, while The Devil's Daughter had a younger, more emotional Holmes that looked very much like John Hamm, which was definitely a choice. But um, when I heard that they were making this game, I knew I had to play it, because not only is it a story of Holmes as a young man, so it's a prequel of sorts, um, apparently it's set on an island and is very open world. And I thought to myself, man, an open world Sherlock Holmes game is something I didn't even know I needed until I um, heard about this game. So I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Let's go ahead and get started. A mother's love. Ask the receptionist about my room. Tobacco from your snuff box disorientates your enemies. Oh, okay, those are just random tips. And we're on a boat. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And, if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. So, that's not Watson. John is normally, uh, spelt in the stories as J-O-H-N. So it's like a childhood friend? Oh, that frame rate, though. I heard there were some performance issues with the game, but we're not going to let that stop us. Hello, man, smoking. So, where are we exactly? It's very pretty. And apparently it took weeks to get here. So... Hey, Sherry. Come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Welcome to the game. Use L to move around and A to interact with objects. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look at our surroundings here. Hello, sir. That is a very nice suit. Cannot open any doors yet. I assume this is going to be like most open world games and we're going to start in an area we're kind of restricted to until the game feels that we're ready to, to head out, you know? We got sculptures and all kinds of cool stuff though. And a gentleman wearing a fez. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Okay. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. <laughs> Why did Sherlock open that door with his face?
Interesting. Okay, we got some maids hard at work. Hello. So this is kind of interesting. It looks like we're having people with all kinds of different states of dress. We've got like the fez kind of We've got Middle Eastern style clothing as well as Victorian. Of course I'm going to ignore <laughs> what the game wants me to do and walk around. Hello. Paintings on the wall. This kind of has like Morocco um, Casablanca vibes. Hello. Would you like a drink, sir? I would. Would you like a drink, sir? The game won't let me. I like the uh, wallet chain and the bag slung on Sherlock's hip. It's a cool choice. Oh, it's our smoker friend. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. And he's French. Nice sideburns. Alrighty, that was an interesting looking cane. Don't want to miss anything, you know? Can't talk to that gentleman. I will check under the stairs, like in any good video game, for secrets. <laughs> Can't go through a portal. That door is locked. I heard it click. I like the art collection, though, but now I'm going to check all the tables. Hello. Dark Rituals at the Graveyard. And so right after I turned the corner, I saw him. The Necromancer. He started to nervously look around, but I quickly hid behind a gravestone. Common sense told me to run, but my duty to you, my readers, was more important than the risk to my own life. Luckily, the vampire did not notice me and continued his devilish ritual. He raised a woman from her grave and ordered her to kill two men who were close by. Then they kissed and made unholy love in her freshly unearthed coffin. It lasted for hours, but when the moon became low in the sky, they turned into bats and flew away. I managed to obtain a few photographs of the victims. Unfortunately, these were confiscated by the police. Dark Rituals at the Graveyard. Please tell me that's something, a case that we can, you know, check out, because that would be amazing. Anything on your table, sir? No? Okay, guess we're good. Oh wait, there's stairs. Ah, uh, let's sign in before we go up the stairs. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? Whoa! Where did you come from? You just teleported. Come on, finish up the formality so we can get off our feet. That reminds me of one of the old Sherlock games where, like, if you turned around and he'd be, like, right next to you, like a weeping angel. That's kind of creepy there, John. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Why wouldn't you want to give John a key, though? Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. I also realized that John, like, isn't following us. I guess this is, this is where we need to go. That's like the NPCs from Sid Meier's Pirates. I love that. A letter lost in the hotel. Dear James, I read your treatise on the uh, binomial theorem with great interest, and although some parts of it still remain unclear for me, I must say that you have done an impressive amount of research. I strongly recommend you publish as soon as possible, for I anticipate a great and wide practical usage of your method as soon as it becomes known. Sincerely yours, Professor Gilbert. I hope we find all the things. Can we? Okay. 
Mm, I do. Mm. 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 Seems like we have quite a melting pot of a location. Hello, gentlemen. I don't know who either of you are. Can't go outside. Oh, here's our music section. Gentlemen, I guess you'll be accompanying me through the uh, majority of the game. Now let's check our... Whoa! Do I have a camera? We can run, that's cool. So camera with left trigger, run with right. Is that detective sense from the previous games? Oh, ye okay. What? Swedish adventurer has hydrophobia, sympathetic? That's cool. Arab actress, alcoholic and friendly. Police snitch. Somalian butler, early riser, sympathetic. Where are we? That is... That's sick. I love it. What about the other buttons? Okay, we're on the stairs that we went underneath. Irish accountant. English singer. German maid. Looks like everyone wants to come to this island. I don't really want to run all that much, to tell you the truth. At least not yet. Hello, nurse. Anything here? No? What's your story? Irish physician? Turkish servant. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Ooh. Let's check what they have on offer. Hey, John, could you stop appearing behind me like Batman? Let's check what they have on offer. Oh, that's weird. John shows up in color. Okay. I have a thought here. Already, I have a I have a conspiracy theory about John. Is John like our Tyler Durden? Is he like an imaginary friend? Because I've noticed that no one has like taken notice of him yet. Holmes took only one key, and our vision. Everyone's in, like washed out except for him. If seafood's not to your taste. Everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached <laughs> eggs with hollandaise sauce. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter who would love to uh, sample Benedict's Batch. Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Whoa, we're getting right into it. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Cool. That was very Jeremy Brett. 
Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay. Where did that gentleman go? I loved his sunglasses. I would love to have a pair. Looks like he ran off, though. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. Okay. He only grabbed one plate. Why didn't he grab two? Where did John go? Oh. Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Are we about to hound the hound of the Baskervilles this cane? What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. This is like in uh, Hound of the Baskervilles when he had to um, examine Dr. Mortimer's walking stick. No matter how long you stare at the stick, it's not going to walk itself to its owner. Ah, the tech division. Okay, we've got three things. Let's... Ooh. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Okay. Oh. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. Wes Craven's name seems a little less intimidating now. Okay, so we're looking for the onion, or the garlic knight. Good to know. The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. Okay. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Sherlock can ask bystanders about the piece of evidence. Press start to open the casebook, pin the evidence with X, and then speak to someone. Try it now with the cane. Oh. Whoa, the mine palace is back. Cool. No clues for a mother's love. Table to spend the evening. Pin evidence with X. John's diary. Looks like John wants to uh, find out about vampires. <laughs> Map. Oh my god. They basically took the approach they did with this map is with freaking Seeking, Sinking City which is another game that Frogware made and another game that starts with a uh, arrival to an island by boat this one was a lot more pleasant though than in Sinking City that's awesome I can't wait to check all of this out alright we even start in the relatively the same area of the island too Okay, um, what was I doing? Sorry. Map. Wardrobe. Bold, black, and brilliant, huh? Oh, John's considered his own... Hmm. Hmm. 
I thought I had unlocked some new stuff. I guess I hadn't. Hmm. Okay. Um. Did I forget to pin? No, I, I did pin. Ask other guests. How about you, ma'am? May I ask you something? Of course. Stop me when you've had enough. There were three people at the table, a couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Don't forget to pin re relevant evidence. Okay, so do we just go out to the... Entrance? I guess that would be the front garden. Trying to find the former Navy officer. Swedish artist has a pug. Affable. Irish singer has a seasonal allergy. So we're looking for someone who definitely isn't affable. And I don't think we could really talk to an oh, Irish diplomat. Cordonian adventurer, dehydrated, sympathetic. Swedish secretary with back pains. French pharmacist. Swedish engineer, retired military officer, affable. Um. Retired military officer, that's something. None of these seem to fit. Let's talk to him. Could you help me? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The Navy officer, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The men talked about yachting, and the lady was fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't ah. you now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. So, do we go to where John saw that sign? It's just so weird that he opens the doors with his face. That mumbling is amazing. Okay, is it upstairs? Or is it... Oh, as John teleports once again. I guess that crystal ball may be a clue. Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. Hmm. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves. First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! You even know who I am. I am so hey, conf boy, so confused that's right my now. Cane. I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made. A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be. It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Okay, so I think we've got confirmation that John is a voice in Holmes's head, or he's something, because he was playing the piano before Holmes even opened the door. So, that is so strange. Do we get to... Oh, we get to observe. Okay, I love this part. Swollen reddish skin. Which uh, would normally mean he takes to drink. Expensive and new clothes, rich and fashionable. Uh. Oh, there's the garlic ring. What's the... Slightly red knuckles, recently hit someone with force. He's not wearing a wedding ring either. Judging by the heraldic emblem on his signet ring and cane, I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, 
a noble Englishman in the habit of visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver malady. Um, his florid face indicates that he has succumbed to the temptation of drink a few shots of alcohol. Perhaps he was unsettled by the seance? By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical condition. Already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond, unsurprisingly. Judging by the heraldic emblem, blah, 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 uh, Lord Craven, a bored rich English nobleman who travels around Europe squandering his money. His florid face indicates that he has problems with alcohol. He is still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years' time, he'll be wretched. Hey! Being constantly drunk, he has issues with his temper. His red knuckles reveal that he has severely beaten at least one person quite recently. His anger issues mixed with alcohol and contrariety could make him a violent person. I figure that this one is the more accurate one. Yeah, that's that's definitely the person that we just saw. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Also, one thing to um, keep in mind here, he didn't introduce John. Like, no one has acknowledged John whatsoever. Even if he didn't appear and start playing the piano before Holmes entered the room, the fact that Sherlock didn't introduce him... That's enough to make me believe that there was something, you know, something weird going on. Also, now that I think about it, when they headed to into the city, Sherlock had a bag, but John didn't. So weird. I'm definitely intrigued, though. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah, it was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me and Emma fainted. I lit the candle and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long dead Indian royalty and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? <laughs> right. To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and wow. perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. New case, Ghost of the Past. Also, I wonder what Emma is to him, since he's not wearing a wedding ring. Maybe just a companion. But we are here in our first crime scene, guys, and I've got way more questions and answers, specifically about John here. But I guess we'll figure it out as the uh, game continues. It's definitely got my attention. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the first episode, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.